Hello. So since we've finished our exploration on on-policy Monte Carlo methods, I thought we could use this time to actually put the skills that we've learned into actual practice by um, going through how we can create a Monte Carlo algorithm for solving the blackjack problem. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to present a solution to you and we're going to walk through how we can actually solve this for the prediction problem, the Monte Carlo prediction problem. Uh, we'll assume that we're doing first visit Monte Carlo. And after that, I will ask you to uh, try to solve it for the control problem. So the extension that you're actually making from the prediction to control problem is actually very minor. So one, if you actually basically understand this, this task should actually be quite easy for you. Having said that, let's actually get started with this um, project that we're trying to work on. So this is an example that's already in Sutton's book. Um, so we're just going through it and actually trying to code it up and see how it looks like and so forth. So first let's talk about the goal in blackjack, right? So if you're already familiar with the rules, we're going to be use a modified version of this game, slightly modified, but the general idea is still the same. So what we're trying to do is obtain cards whose numerical value is as great as possible without exceeding 21. This is the goal in blackjack, so just keep that in mind as we go further. So the rules is that we've got two players, we've got the dealer and we've got the player, right? So we're just calling them this, but they're both players in this game. So the player that's closest to the goal is the one that wins. So the one that's closest to 21 is the one that wins. So if any player exceeds 21, they go bust and they lose. Uh, if both players exceed 21, there is a draw. So assuming that neither of the players actually go bust, then the one that's closest to 21 wins the game. So I'm going to uh, show you an example of how this game actually works through the simulation I designed for it. Um, the other thing we're going to do is that um, we're going to be having this sampling with replacement. I'm going to go back to this factor, but first let's just uh, elaborate the rules a bit more. So both players receive two cards in the beginning of the game, right? So one of the dealer's cards is face down um, and the other one is face up, right? So when I was talking about sampling with replacement, we assume that the cards that they're drawing from is an infinite deck, right? That any time we pick a card, um, we might pick it up again. So that there's no additional value in maintaining a set of cards that you've already picked and so forth. We want to make this as simple as possible. So this is the twist. And another minor twist is um, if you're familiar with the normal blackjack rules, um, there's this whole concept of a usable ace and an ace when a usable ace is a value of 11 and an ace is a normal value of 1. Um, here we're just going to keep it simple. So each and every card, if it's 2 of clubs, 2 of hearts, the value is 2. If it's a 3, the value is 3. If it's a 4, the value is 4 and so on. Um, but the ace has a value of 1. The jack, the queen and the king have a value of 10. So these are basically the rules. So now that you have an idea of what the rules are, um, like I, I hope that you uh, actually absorbed what they are because that's going to be a bit important uh, when we actually talk about how we design this game and how we actually apply our algorithms to it. So let's start with the state representation. So one thing we had said was that both players receive two cards in the beginning of the game, but one of the dealer's cards is face down, right? So the way this game works is that the player plays first, and then after he's done, the dealer plays after that. So it's not like, uh, you know, they're changing turns or something. It's like one plays first and the other plays afterwards. So the, the our state representation actually is the player's current total and the card that the dealer is showing, right? So um, right now, maybe this might not be very uh, clear if you're, if you're not already familiar with the rules of the game. Um, but when I run the simulation, it should uh, clear all your doubts and help you understand the flow of the game, basically. So this is our state representation. I'll come back to this later. So the action that a player or a dealer can do is hit or stick. 
So when a player does a hit, he's requesting for an additional card, but if he makes a stick, that means he's ending his turn at his current score, right? So the idea is that um, if you win, you get a reward of one. If you lose, you get a reward of minus one. If it's a draw, the reward is a zero. And all rewards are given at the end of the episode. So during the episodes, like all rewards are just zero, essentially. Um, so that's the idea. So now I'm going to actually run the simulation of the game uh, so that uh, we can see how it's actually flowing first before we go into designing the algorithm and how it actually looks. But before doing that I just want to uh, share with you one thing. Now there's a website that you can follow um, since we have multiple modules like reinforcement learning, statistical machine learning, algorithms, uh, which we had mentioned before. There's also another one on programming design patterns if you're interested. Um, I have a yet added the material for that yet but I will in future in the future. Um, so the first thing is for the reinforcement learning lecture um, now like since the videos on YouTube are not that structured properly since the uploads are happening at random times um, you can just come here and you can have an organized view and watch whichever lecture you want with its own description and stuff so that you know better what you're learning about. Um, so this was just a side note, um, so feel free to explore it. Right now there are uh, 11 lectures here, and this is a trough one, which is the one that we're making right now. Um, but for statistical machine learning, so far there are only three lectures and so forth, so you can visit the site uh, jabratutorials.com um, if you want this uh, information in, uh, in your hands and stuff. So I digress. Let me go back to the actual game, right, for the blackjack. So let me start the simulation. So this is just a basic uh, simulation program that I wrote for playing this game so that it's much more clearer to you to see. So this is how the game begins, right? So I am the player and my current cards are, are 2 and an 8, so my current score is 10, right? And the dealer's cards is this face down card, which I don't know what it is, and a 7. So what is my state representation right now? My state representation is what I can actually see, right? What I can see right now, what you can see right now is all the algorithm can see. The algorithm does not know what the dealer's card is and stuff like that. That's something uh, it's supposed to learn to make actions uh, in this whole field of uncertainty. It's not sure, right, about what this cards actually are so that's the thing this is our state representation so we can take two actions either we can hit or we can stick so right now i'm gonna play the hit uh, card so i hit and then my next card is an ace and my score is 11 right so what should i do i'm still not yet on 21 i'm gonna hit again now i'm on 20 so of course it's probably unwise for me to hit at this point or else I'll probably lose. Um, so at this point I'm going to stick. Then the dealer is going to play his cards. And since my score is 20 and the dealer played and he got a 24, that means I win, right? How is the dealer making his decisions? I'm actually going to go through it. But first let's actually go through another game. Uh, basically to see how it works so right now my score is 15 I'm gonna do a hit and bam I went bust the dealer also went bust uh, because our scores are both above 21 so we both lose right so that's basically the flow of the game um, let me play uh, one more time so that we can see better and here my current score is 11 so I'm gonna do a hit and now I'm on 21, uh, so obviously the only thing that can happen here is either I'm going to win or I'm going to draw, right? So since the dealer scored 20, that means I win. This is basically how blackjack is working. And we only know what the dealer's uh, cards are going to be at the end of the episode, after the episode has ended, after we finish playing. So at each point, right, uh, I'm going to actually repeat this point again. So at each point, the only things that we know are our current score based on the two cards we received at the start of the game and the dealer's face-up card. So this is the only information we're going to use to make a decision on whether to hit or stick. Right now, we are the one that's doing it. 
but we want to make an algorithm that learns how to do it by itself right and that's actually going to be one of the tasks that you might undertake to do this um, uh, when you're solving a Monte Carlo for the control problem but in this particular video we're going to solve it for the prediction problem so what were we talking about when we we're talking about the prediction problem um, we had said the following like we want to know how valuable it is in t to being in a particular state, right? Um, this is kind of like what's important, like um, oh, how is it like if we know how valuable it is to be in a certain state, then we can uh, later on make decisions about which states we actually want to be in and what actions we ought to be taking from those states. That's basically the idea here. Um, so having said that, let's actually go a little bit into the code. So I'm not actually going to go through the code in uh, creating this whole game and everything um, because that is not um, the subject of this lecture uh, in a sense. Um, it's actually beyond what we're trying to do here. The only goal we have today uh, is just to write a first visit uh, Monte Carlo algorithm for the prediction problem. right? This is what we want to do. So I've already taken the courtesy to actually write um, some of the, uh, design the environment that you can use uh, for the blackjack problem uh, so that you can actually uh, solve for this problem as you wish. So let me first uh, just briefly go through some of these classes. So right now you don't actually need to understand most of these things. Just get a high level overview. Don't actually go into the code and start seeing what everything is doing yet. Um, you can do that of course in your own spare time uh, to help you like modify it for your own use. Um, but in this particular lecture, let's just focus on a particular thing. We've got a class for a player. So so what can the player do? Either he can hit or he can stick. And we know what hit means. You are requesting for additional cards and stick. You just want to stop uh, playing the game. This is what we know about the player. So this is essentially all we need to know for now. And then the environment, right? This is uh, going to be quite important because the environment is going to be, if we remember the diagram from reinforcement learning, the player uh, makes an action and based on the action the environment uh, rewards the player and gives them a new state that is in right so the environment is responsible for generating the states and the rewards um, which is essentially what's happening here in the function step so uh, based on the action that the player has made so the player sup supplies this function of the action um, and then the environment simulates this action right and based on that it's going to return the player with a new state and a reward and whether his turn is finished or not so this th these are actually the function of the environment so again you don't uh, need to understand uh, right now like uh, the details of the code i'm actually going to just highlight the important points that we'll need to know to actually write our monte carlo algorithm for this so you can take uh, this uh, part as is uh, for now and then let's look at the reward function um, this might actually be important to know how we actually design this reward function so what are the conditions we have so either the player can go bust which means he's going above 21 which is this threshold the bust thresh which is 21 here um, either the player can go bust the dealer can go bust the player can score higher or the dealer can score higher so based on all these conditions if they are both bust that means it's a draw if the player is bust and the dealer is not bust it's a negative one because the player lost otherwise it's a one because the player wins so this is kind of like the rules we have here or if the player scored higher right assuming that both of them did not bust um, then the player gets one or the dealer gets minus one and so on so you can just um, look through this and just understand how the reward function is working based on the di different conditions but one thing here that's important here is that the dealer is actually part of the environment as I have written over here right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the dealer a fixed policy and the fixed policy is that if the dealer reaches a score like after doing a hit or like if his total is um above 17 right then he should stick always 
So that's the dealer's policy. Anytime he reaches 17, he should stick. And that's the policy you were actually witnessing in, in the game that I was showing you. That's how the dealer was making his decisions. Like anytime you reach the, uh, what you call it, 16, uh, 17, sorry. Um, if you reach more than that, you stick, whatever the value might be, right? So since this is the dealer's policy we of course are trying to design our own policy that we can actually win more games than the dealer right that that's actually what the goal here is um so that's what the environment look like so let's look at this blackjack sampler because this is uh, also an important point we need to uh, an important part of the call we need to go through um so what is this so first of all, we are using this to generate an episode, right? So the idea is that we've got a dealer, we've got a player, we've got the environment, right? So in the beginning, we have a state, the initial state of the environment. So what is this initial state? The initial state is what we saw here, right? This is the initial state where the player score is 12 and the dealer score is nine because that's all we can see. So this is all the algorithm should be able to see as well. Like, this is our initial state like 12 and 9 um, and uh, while true we're going to do the following we're going to uh, get an action based on some policy function so if you remember the prediction problem how are we talking about the prediction problem we're saying that someone gives us a policy and they want us to evaluate how good that policy is that's it this is the prediction problem. So we assume that we have some magical policy function um, that were given uh, by someone and we're trying to evaluate that policy to see how good it is but by using Monte Carlo prediction. So using that policy, we're going to take an action, right? And uh, based on that action, we're gonna do the environment the step function that we saw before and it's going to give us the state and the reward, right? And we're going to uh, append it all to the episode trace, right, over here, and that's what we return. So this whole blackjack sampler, all it's doing is just generating an episode where you got state, action, reward, state, action, reward pairs until you reach a terminal state. This is kind of like how it's working here. Um, so having said that, let's actually get into stock uh the, let's actually get into the code now uh, the part that we need to focus on which is first visit Monte Carlo prediction right so right now I have already written some helper functions here but uh, the code that we're gonna be going through is highlighted uh, this is the part that we're gonna be working on here where it says our code here so what policy are we evaluating Again, we are not trying to make decisions right now. We are not trying to um, say that uh, we're not trying to find the best policy or anything of the sort. Otherwise, if we're trying to find the best policy, we'll be doing Monte Carlo control. But since we're doing the prediction problem, we're going to have a policy. What's the policy? The policy is as follows. We're going to assume that any time that you're at 20 or you're at 21, uh, yeah, any time that you are greater than or equal to 20, you're going to stick, right? This is the policy, otherwise you hit. So as long as you're below 20, you always hit. But once you reach 20 or 21, you stick. This is the policy we want to evaluate. So someone gives us this policy and they say, evaluate how good that policy is. That's what the Monte Carlo prediction problem is. Um, for the control problem, we would be trying to improve such a policy with a better one, uh, which is not the scope of this video. Um, this is kind of like something that you can work on on your spare time. It's a very simple extension of what I'm going to show here, right? Uh, because if you remember when we went to the Monte Carlo prediction algorithm and the Monte Carlo control algorithm, they were so similar, except that we were just modifying it for action values, right? Um, so this is... Um, all we're gonna go through for for this particular lecture so let's actually start so first thing first okay we have a policy function here okay this is just a plot function we'll make use of later um, but this is um, we got self dot values right uh, which will start as an empty dictionary so first thing we're going to do is say uh, so let's start with our blackjack uh, so we say blackjack 
I don't want to use this. This equals to blackjack sampler. So let's start with the blackjack sampler here. Right. And if you look at the code that I'm writing here and you look at the pseudocode in Saturn's book for um, what you call it for reinforcement learning, you'll see qu they're quite similar. I've tried to maintain the same uh, structure so that you are able to better follow um, you, so you can easily map how, how easy it is to translate that code into something that you can immediately use. Even though it's just pseudocode and it's just in words, you can just transform it into Python code and you can use it as you want. So that's the idea. So we start with the blackjack sampler and then we're just going to loop um, Let's just iterate once for now. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to say episode uh, is equals to blackjack dot generate episode, right? And then it needs a policy function. And we already have a policy function we defined called self dot policy. So this is the function we're calling the generate episode. It needs a policy function that tells us how to, that tells it how to act. Right. So let's actually print this so that we see what an episode looks like. Right. Uh, so that you can easily follow. So I'm just going to run this first visit with the color prediction. So this is what an episode looks like. So you've got the initial state. Again, a state that is represented the, by this tuple. The first element is our current total. The second element is the dealer's current total that he's we, he can show if you remember those two things again uh, I'm just gonna open this again like this t th this is uh, 17 and 5 so our state is just represented by the tuple 17 comma 5 in this case right so that's what we're generating here so we got state 12 comma 10 the action is 0 0 means hit right 1 is for stack zero is for hit let me just make that clear here okay so so this is state then this is action then this is reward then this is a new state we're in then this is the action we took then this is the reward then we did state and then uh, action and then this is the reward so that means it, as you can see here we were in a nice state uh, 20 comma 10 and our action was to stick right which is as per this policy and we still lost which means probably the dealer in this case um, had a score of 21 uh, so this is this is uh, the idea here so every time uh, again state action reward state action reward so the tuple here is the state the next value is the action and the next one is the reward and so on so that's what this episode is. It's just generating us the sequence that actually led us, led us to that point. Um, so we have our episode. So the next thing we need to do is um, we're going to initiate the return to be zero, right? That's the first thing we need to do. And then we're going to do the following for i in range, right? So first thing is we're going to be looping in reverse. And if you have no idea why I'm doing this like this, please watch the previous video where I, we went through why we might be doing things this way. So we start from the length of the episode uh, up to zero. And our step is minus three, actually, not minus one. So if we do it like this, then we can define our reward, right, as episode I, right, and we can define our action as uh, we can define it as episode I minus one here, and we can define so we've got reward since we're looping in reverse, it should be reward action state instead of state action reward. So it's like we've got our state here, it's goes to episode. Um, so if you cannot follow at this point, just pause. Uh, you can write this code along and try to understand the logic as to why we're doing things this way. Um, that might actually be helpful for you. So this is the state. Um, let me print these things out just to make sure they are working the way that we intend them to. So print state. 
avoid action and state. Um, okay, and then we run this. So okay, so it looks fine. Okay, it's working fine. It's going in reverse in this case. Okay, so this is the idea. Now we have the reward action and the state. Next thing is we need to update the G, right? The G value, uh, the return, which is just the previous value plus the reward, right? So if the state, right, that we're encountering, um, probably this is not going to happen in blackjack. Probably should check on that. But in any way, uh, this is something we just need to be careful of. So if the state right is already in the episode starting from i up to i minus two um, again this is implementing first visit by the way so if this happens that means it is not our first visit to the state right it means it's not our first visit to the state since we're looping in reverse if the state already exists in the episode that we have here um, which means we're supposed to continue in this case right um, since we are implementing first visit Monte Carlo this would be different if we're implementing every visit we would average this returns as well but not in this case okay so that's the idea so if the state is here we're going to continue and the next thing is okay if the state is in so we've got self dot values here which is where we're maintaining the value our value function so self dot values if the state is in self dot values um what are we supposed to do well if it's already there we're just gonna say self dot values state dot append g right we want to uh, append the return, and we're going to average them out at the end of the uh, at the end of this um, whole looping structure we have here. So that's what we're gonna do. Else, well, if it's not already in the self dot values, what we want to do is to put it in there, right? So self dot values state um, is equals to g. So that's the idea, right? So after this, we should have a dictionary. So I'm just gonna print it to make sure that everything works as intended. Uh, I'm gonna print out the self.values and I'm gonna run it. Okay, uh, for the state, we have the value and so forth. I guess, yes, it should go on like that. So the more uh, iterations we run here, the more states we can actually explore. Uh, that's the basic, you know, uh, magic behind this um, so after doing this now we need to actually average these values out right so what we need to do for that we can say self dot values right is equals to so first let's just assign some key so this code is a bit dirty I would say um, but the point here of course is not writing clean code but just writing code that you can um, okay at least clean enough for you to follow um, but it's not a design pattern thing here we're just trying to write the algorithm uh, for Monte Carlo prediction uh, first visit so we've got the key here we've got sum right what do we want to take the sum of self dot values for the key right and what do we want to do here? So after taking the sum of this, we want to divide the sum by the length, right, of self dot values key, right? So for every key, we want to divide the sum by the length um, so that we actually get the average. Uh, and this is for key in self dot values. So that's how we remap this dictionary. So let's print self.values just to make sure everything is okay. And it seems okay somewhat. So let's, uh, if there's a bug, we can deal with it. But for now, let's return self.values. Okay. 
So this is what we did. Um, and we're just iterating once. So if we iterate, let's say a thousand times, right? I'm just gonna iterate this a thousand times. And then let's print self.values and see what it looks like here. Um, and okay, we get a bunch of stuff over here. So this is what we get here. So now I want us to plot the value function. So I've already written uh, the code for doing this so that we don't actually have to do it uh, in this particular lecture since it's again out of context. So I'm just going to call the plot function. So fbmc.plot value function. So let us plot this function and see what it looks like, right? So this is what the value function looks like for just, um, this is just for after running it with for 1000 iterations. As you see, um, it's a bit, it's still a bit hard to tell what it is. Um, here we've got the dealers showing card, we've got the player sum and we've got the value. Um, this is what this is actually showing. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is, um, since the iterations are not enough, we need a better view of what the value function should look like as we approach infinity, right? So what I'm gonna do is um, increase the number of iterations here from, uh, where was it, 1,000. Let's make it 100,000 iterations, right? And see what that looks like. So it's gonna take a second. Mm. Okay, and it's starting to resemble more and more uh, what would expect the final value function to look like. And why is it this the case? If you look at this, okay, let, let's actually try to analyze what this function means, right? Uh, when we plot it like this. So we've got the dealer's showing card over here, and we've got the player's sum, right? These are our states, right? The player's current sum and the dealer's showing card. And then this is the value. And as you can see, the value just starts going up when we reach uh, around 20, uh, 20 or 21. Why is that the case? Because um, this is how we defined our policy for one, if you really think about it. If we reach 20, if we reach 21, this is where we actually trying to uh, stick at that point right and as we stick at that point our chances of winning are really high anyway um, and as you can see it's darker in this region and lighter in this region which means the rewards in this area are much higher or I should say the return since this is the value function are much higher than in this area why is that the case because if the dealer's showing card is high there's a higher chance of him going bust right so if the dealer's showing card is high, since there's a higher chance of him going bust, if our player's sum is already right around 20, that means we have a high chance of winning, right? Um, so we almost win every single time that we're actually here, right? As compared to here, if the dealer's showing card is low, um, the chances of him actually winning, uh, even if our current sum is a 20, um, it's still a little bit high, right? Because the initial showing card is low and we're sampling from, uh, what you call it, infinite in this case with the replacement and stuff like that. So that's how you can interpret uh, this graph that I plotted here. Um, so this is the basic idea behind this. Um, so the core idea you need to get here is that right now, okay, we actually uh, decided on a value function based on some policy, right? Um, that we say that um, we will always stick when we reach 20 or higher. Uh, the, 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 this, is the, this is the policy that we have. We're evaluating how good that policy is. We saw the value function that shows us how good that policy is. And these are the kind of tools that we need to be able to make decisions at times, right? So now your challenge is to uh, use the same environment, the same code th that I've provided you with here and try to improve this policy. Is this the best we can do actually? Um, uh, if we're assuming that the dealer is going by this fixed policy where he always hits, um, where he always sticks when he's above 17. Um, if we're assuming this, what's actually the best policy for us to come up with in that state? Is this the best or is there something better we can do? Um, and for you to actually do that, 
first you can implement the Monte Carlo control right for action values this can be first visit or every visit you can experiment with both and you can make the assumption of exploring starts uh, if you want when you're doing this control problems or um, you can start uh, doing the whole concept of exploration versus exploitation after removing that assumption if you remember where we give a probability to every action to be uh, to be greater than zero at every single state right but approaches zero for the non-greedy actions so this is something that uh, will only make sense of course if you've watched the previous lectures um, but if you haven't of course it will be it's gonna be a bit difficult to follow so having said that I'm going to end this lecture here uh, thank you